Something which I've, I find intriguing, there's a couple boogeymen which on this trip we were either going to confirm or deny. We get into this gravel road where there's construction, they've torn up the road, they're kind of resurfacing it. Boogeyman number one is that mean person that doesn't look like you, doesn't speak the same language of you, and is going to do nothing but take advantage of you because they don't look like me and you and they're mean. They're mean people. And there's tons of piles of dirt on the side and the rain that had come down, I think, washed this fine silt or something onto the road. And then at like three miles an hour, it's just like boom. The bike just falls down because you're driving on Crisco cooking oil. Did he exist? Would he just screw us over? And we've been to several countries by now, so I feel like after 77 days, and 9,000 miles, I've got a pretty good idea as to whether or not the boogeyman exists. And he doesn't. And so, it's little guys, you know, some dudes stop in a car, help us get the bike back up. You know, in one, of the, in one of the previous videos, when the bikes fell down in the parking lot, in Mazatlan, I believe we were, or near Mazatlan, random guy comes over, helps us pick him up. You know, nobody just watches the gringos struggle. Everyone helps us. Taxi driver sprinted, grabbed my bike before it went down in Cali, Colombia. Like, time and time again, we've got these examples of people helping us out. It's awesome. We showed up there at night, which was a bad idea. Can't find our hotel. We're totally lost in this city. Pulled over on the sidewalk, and there's the two gringos off their bikes with like a map and a, an iPhone going, where the hell are we? You know, like, couldn't look like you don't fit anymore. Like, rob me, rob me. But that's not what happens. People stop, they come up, hey, where are you guys from? Oh, that's so cool, what are you looking for? This hotel, oh, I'm not sure. They pull out their phone, they're trying to find stuff. They're stopping other people they don't even know just to help us out. We pull into this, we pull into this town because it was just raining, getting hammered with rain, needed a place to stay. We check in, dirty and grimy as usual. That's not good at all. <laughs> the hotel owner, he loves that we have bikes, takes great care of us. He's like, man, you guys have been in the rain all day long. I don't want you to be in the rain again. So he made his restaurant open two hours early just for the two of us by ourselves in the restaurant so that we could have a good meal and we wouldn't have to be in the rain. It has renewed my faith in humanity. People on Earth are good people and they want to do the right thing and they want to help you out and they're just like you and I and they're just waiting for you to come to their country and enjoy yourself, and I recommend that you do. So now the other boogeyman, right? The CrossFit boogeyman. And it's the other gym that has the bad trainers and is hurting their clients and doing it. It's the other gym, it's always the other gym, this, this boogeyman gym that I keep hearing of. Cuatro en Lima, uno en Arequipa. Y queremos que el movimiento siga creciendo. So that's, it's kind of interesting, we're 2013 right now, and in five years, there's only five boxes in all of Peru. The average income here per, per, per month is about $200. So Jose, really cool story. Kicking it in the park right now. A couple years ago, went to his level one. He ends up um, getting a $1,000 loan to get his level one. Flies, rounds up more money. So because I didn't have much of the English, and so by a couple points, didn't pass the test. Dude, he has to fly out again. I slept in the airport, <laughs> Damn. and I went to Chile. Slept in the airport. He goes back out, goes to Colombia, passes the test, right? Just to get his level one. And so we're here making CrossFit grow in Peru. That is absolutely one of the coolest stories <laughs> that I've heard. Oh, yeah. I mean, Todd was just not giving up. I mean, sleeping in the airport, saving the money, going back the next year, like doing it at night out in the park until you get enough people. Like, yeah, it's total just grassroots. Grassroots CrossFit. Yeah. You take it for granted in the United States, you know, to take a certification like that, a thousand. But when you're making two hundred dollars, right, a month. Do you know what I mean? It's a massive investment. That is a massive investment. Manny and Jane had some cool history. Manny's with CrossFit Mature and Jane's with CrossFit Imperio. Manny's opening a new spot down here and it's not that far down the road from where we are right now. Pretty close. You know, we're moving our new we're moving into a new facility, right? So we're we're expanding, we're we're moving into a new facility. And while his gym is under construction, moving locations, she opened her doors to his clients. 
She's like, hey, I don't want your, you, your business, your clients to suffer while you're moving from one gym to another because it can take a while down here. She's like, so come on over to our gym and throw down as many people as you need for as long as you need. Yeah, you'll never know it when you need that help. You know, later down the road, you might need somebody to help you out and you'll come back around. Yeah. That's the community right there. That's it, that's it. We realized that um, it, the best way to impact the community and a culture is to actually get into the fiber of it through a business. We did an MBA together yep. and uh, this was part of our business plan. We did for thesis a business plan of, of a CrossFit affiliate. So we went to CrossFit Mirror Flores, it's in a Globo gym. But it's unlike any CrossFit gym I've ever seen before in a Globo gym. The type of product is an ethical product. It's, it's not, we are not selling uh, looking good, we're selling health. And, and, and you're selling a good product that has a high value for the client. Great people, great training, and super fun. They've got this thing they do where if you leave gear out on the ground, They've got like the chicken of death. They've got these three different chickens. That's the chicken of punishment. You leave your stuff, you know, written on the ground. They see snapping a photo of it right now with a bunch of chickens, and that means you're gonna pay for leaving your stuff out. Chickens are talking shit about what you left behind and how you're gonna pay the man next time you come in the gym with burpees or whatever it is you don't happen to uh, to like. And they post it on Facebook, and their community just has a field day with it. They've created an awesome culture and found a way to make it happen in an area that rents are very high and it's tough to find a space. Because los idiomas sean distintos y es un trabajo en conjunto. That was very cool. So at that very end there is like, you know, since we're Peru hasn't quite gotten to the level that he wants, it's like, well, you know, like we'll see. Vamos a ver, we'll, we'll see what's gonna happen. And he was like, no no no, like we're not we're not gonna see, we're gonna do it. Like we're gonna make it happen. You know, and uh, it's kinda cool, it's like hey this video and trip that you guys are doing is doing nothing but helping us we're doing it together and we're showing the world that hey we might speak a different language and have our own thing going on but we're all crossfitters and and, and we can do this and, and we'll, we'll pull it off together so great people making huge differences in people's lives having a great time working out and doing what they do man just spreading CrossFit, doing it every damn day